Welcome back to another video on the web design for beginners. Now this is where things get more interesting. We are going to learn about CSS. So what is CSS? CSS is just an acronym for cascading style sheet and is used to apply style in your web page. So we'll be learning about our tags, We'll be learning about attributes, we've been adding images. But most of the time when we add a text, the text turns out to be black. Now, black is not the only color, neither is white, which usually the background is always white. So being able to tweak the color, being able to tweak the size of the text and so many other styles, it unlock big potential on how we can design our web pages. Like someone said that CSS it's like the flesh that gets added to a skeleton so imagine a human body you have a skeleton that kind of like determines the structure of your body and then you have every other thing that comes up after the skeleton you could have the muscles the fat the color of your skin so all these other things determine okay how big or small a portion of your body is so that is what css gives us or even to add animations to a web design. So when you're writing CSS, there's some things you need to note. So each property or each CSS property has a name and a value pair and is separated by a comma. So we have a typical example here. This is a H2 tag. And the way we add CSS, one of the ways we add CSS is using this particular method, which I'm gonna explain it as. So this is like an attribute, if you remember. So this is like a style attribute. And in here we have something that says color red. So this bit that has a style equal to and the quotes, that is our style property. Now in that style property, we have our name and our value. So the name is color and the value of the color is red. So apart from just specifying the color, we can also add other names and values. So that is separated by a semicolon. So you can see I ended that red with the semicolon and if I wanted to add more name and values, I would do so after the semicolon, but still inside the code. We're going to see that in practice anyways. So how do we add styles to our HTML? Now there are three ways we can do that. The first one is called inline. The second one is called internal and the third is external. So these are the three ways we can use to add styles to our website or HTML file. So we're going to be looking at the first one, which is what the inline CSS. So we did this by using the style attributes inside the HTML elements is similar to the example I just showed you. So let us head over to our code and actually do the main stuff. So if you remember, we had done this, we have this file where we have uh, P tags, we have images, we have some I tags, we have some real tags. So all this is fine and good, but we haven't added any style. So I want to style some of this. I want to change the color of my heading, the heading that says my favorite food. So if I'll just open the browser and I'll show you what we have here. So my favorite food, it's just here and I want to change the color, say red. So let's make this red. So remember I'm using the inline method. So the way the inline method works is that you need to add that attribute and we add attributes in the opening tag inside the opening tags so i just carefully put my cursor just before the angle bracket and after where the one is so i'll give a space and then i'll put the style attribute so i type style and i'll say equal to and i put my double quotes now inside this double quote is where i'm going to now define the name and value pairs of the style property so i want to change the color of that font so i'll say color and i'll put a column and i write the color i want red and i close off with a semicolon so this is my style attribute the name of the style is color and the value is red so when i save this and if i head back to my browser voila you can see that it's red i can also change colors of other html elements so let's just head back so let's say for this p tag i want to change the color that says my favorite food is 
rice and stew so the same step i'm using the inline method so i'll place my cursor inside the opening tag that's where the p is and just before the angle bracket ends so i'll give it a space and i'll type style equals to for my double quotes i'm making sure that i'm inside my double quotes i will type the property i'll type the name sorry so I say name and uh, let's say green let me end that with my semicolon i'll save so that portion is green so you might be wondering can i use any color name i want well you can't use any color name you want but you can use virtually any color now what do i mean there are some colors that your browser cannot understand or recognize with their name red is a common color green is a common color those colors can be understood by the browser in fact there used to be only 17 colors that browsers can understand just by their names but now it has expanded to a hundred and something now but it's still not enough so how can I now use any color I want now there are two popular methods there are many other methods but I'm just going to be mentioning two in this course the first way is by using what we call a hex code now I'll show you what that means now I'm going to change this red okay to the hex code equivalent so I'm just going to get rid of where I typed red and to use the hex code method you start writing your color with the hashtag so I put a hashtag and I want to specify the color red so I'm just going to write out the code and then I'll explain later so the code for red is ff0000 so this will give you the color red now this is hex code now the first two values refers to your red so ff here is what tricks the red zero zero refers to green and the other zero zero here refers to the blue so what this means is that my red is at the highest and my green and blue are at the lowest that's what the zero is here so this gives us a red color so if i had to save and i go back to my browser it's still going to be red having this in mind gives the possibility to use more than a million colors in your website so that is why developers prefer using hex or the second method they prefer to use rgb values so for this green i'm going to use the rgb values and how you write that is i'll delete the green i'll say rgb which stands for red green and blue then i open a parenthesis and in there i'm going to type the three values for my color so for each of the colors your values ranges from zero to 255 so 255 is the highest <laughs> so for my red i'll say zero no red for my green i'll say 255 which is the highest for green and for my blue i'll say no blue so this is going to give me the color green so if i were to save and i go back and this is going to be green okay cool now i'm going to be using these two methods interchangeably sometimes i'm going to use a hex code to define the color sometimes i'm going to use the rgb method of doing that so whichever you see don't get confused so apart from colors there are other styles we can use we can also determine the size of our font so i'm still on line number 14 i want to make this my favorite food look bigger okay so i want to add an additional style to it now i'm not going to go ahead and add another style attribute i am going to continue adding my styles inside my style attribute and i'll do that after the semicolon so i just go after the semicolon making sure i'm still inside my double quotes so i'm going to add something we call font size i put a column and i define the value so i can use let's go with 18 you can say it in px so px stands for pixels so when i save that let me make sure that i end up with my semicolon so after the px i put my semicolon so you can see here i added two styles so i defined the color then i defined the font size now once you're done defining a particular style property you end it with a semicolon so that you can add more now all of these are inside the style attribute so take note so when i save this i go back to my browser and that p tag looks a little bit big in fact i'm going to make it bigger so let's change this to let's say 36 oops 36 and save now that even looks bigger than the h1 
So this is the beauty of styles. You can define how a particular element looks disregarding any of the defaults it might have. So my P tag that usually looks as small as this now looks as big as this and has a color of green. So another thing I'm going to cover in this video is background, changing of your background color. So let's head back to our code. Now I want to change the background color of my favorite food. Remember it was red, so I just want to add on the background color. So since I already have a style attribute defined, I just make sure that I go inside the quotes after the semicolon of where I have color, I'll give a space just to make it readable. So I'll say background dash color. Now anything that has a space when you're defining a CSS property, we do not use spaces for the name, although we can use spaces for the value, but not the name. So like I have background dash color and then I put my column and um, for the background color, let me make it blue. So I put my hashtag zero zero ff. I think this should be blue. And when I save this, you can see it has a background of blue. Now you might be wondering, oh, am I going to be able to know all the codes of the color? Well, you you shouldn't bother knowing everything. Okay, with time you're going to know the very common ones. And if you're ever in a bind to get a particular color you want, there are several ways you can do that. There are color pickers online you can use. I will share some of them on the screen right now. Or VS Code also come bonded with the color picker. So what I usually do is I just type in any color I can remember. And then when I place my mouse over that uh, color I just typed, it's going to bring up a color picker. Here I have the freedom to pick the color I want can choose the color I want. And the cool thing is that you can also play around with the transparency. I'm going to cover that much later in the course. A light shade of purple or should I go light shade of purple is fine. Now another method you can use it uh, if you're Windows 10, there's a free software called Paints 3D. I'm just going to show you how that works. So I have my Paint 3D opened. I click on new and when I click on new, I don't want to do anything here anyways. I just want to pick the color. So I go to the color picker here. I click on it. I choose the color I want. So any color I pick here is the hex value of that. So I can just copy that and head back to my code. And let's see, I can just paste that. Uh, let's paste that here. So I'm going to change from red to orange or a shade of orange. So when I head back to my browser, that has a shade of orange and the background of purple. So what I'm going to do now, since we've learned how to add colors, a background color. So I'm going to make this look a little bit better. I'll make the background of the website to be black or dark, very dark gray. I'll change the colors of my headers and change the colors of my p tags so let's do that so since i want to make the background the whole background to be dark or black so i'll go to my body tag here and i'll add an inline style so i'll give it space i'll say style equal to and here i'll say background color so black is six zeros so when i put the six zeros and if i hover over that uh, i can make it a little bit uh, lighter gray okay that's fine so if i had to save and let's see what we have so this is dark which is fine i'm going to make my headings to be orange or a shade of yellow and all my other texts are going to be white so let's head back and uh, let's see um Okay, so I can get rid of the background color here. You know what? I'm just going to leave it like that. I'm going to change the background color to, let me go with black, so six zeros. And uh, I'll make this much, uh, add more yellow to this. Okay, let's see how that looks. Okay, that's fine. Then this one that was green, I would make the font size to be 18px and the color, uh, I'm just going to get rid of the RGB. I'll use hex code and the value for white is 6Fs. So F, 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 that'll give us white. So you can see that it's white. So I am going to go ahead and do that to the other P tag here. So I'll give a space. I'll say style equal to color and hashtag FFFF. 
f 6x so that has turned this to white already now i just have these two that are white because they are both p tags but i have a problem i'm running into a problem if i want to make all my p tags i can see i have more than one p tag if i want to make all of them white the problem i have now is i have to be adding these style attributes to all of them it becomes cumbersome now there's a solution for that so that is by using another method for adding styles and that method is by using internal css and we do that by defining the styles in the head section of the html using a style tag so let's see how that works and also the advantage of that so i'm back in my code so i'll head to my head section my head section section is right here so after my title i'll just hit enter and i'll put a style tag i hit tab so this has created a style tag for me now in that style tag i'm going to now define my style properties now i want all my p tags to be white and here's how we do it inside this style tag i put my p so this p refers to all the p tags so this will affect all the p tags that do not have an inline styling okay so i put my p then i put curly brackets now inside this curly bracket is where i type my style names and values so the style name is color i put my column and the value is white so hashtag ffff and i'll end that with my semicolon now when i save it's going to affect all the p tags because i have it in my head section and it's affecting all the p tags like so so let's see that in practice so let me just open my browser okay now everything that had a p tag is now white so this is white this is white this is white this is white we still have some other black uh text because they are not p tags so let's see what they are and let's add a style to it so head back to my code those ones that are still black they are li tags they're in li tags so i head back to my head section now i already have for p and i have the curly bracket so after the curly bracket of my p where it ends i go there just put my cursor after there i hit enter so this will create a new line for me and on this new line i can now define styles for the li now since i want to target all the li tags i just type li and i put my curly bracket now inside that curly bracket is where i put the css name or the style name and the values so i'll say color and the value i want is white 6f so i save now you might see how my uh my formatter is kind of like making things look neat so you can have everything on one line like so or you can decide to separate them in different lines okay that still works fine so when i save i head back to my browser you can see all the allies are also white so we still have some things that are black here so i'm going to try and identify what tag they are i know they are all inside dl so i am going to make reference to dl hopefully it should affect everything inside affect the children so let's go back to our style head i'll say dl and i'll say color 6f so I head back to my browser so what happened is that they all turned white now i didn't target the attack specifically but i targeted their parent so the children inherited the color of their parents so that's another way you can style things but i'm going to cover this in more depth in more videos so what we've learned so far in this video is that we can use inline styling like so okay but inline styling is a little bit limited in that we can only style one particular element at a time so therefore we also employed the internal method of styling where you add a style tag in the head section and then you can target more than one uh, tag by just specifying the tag so this is going to target all the p tags this is going to target all the li tags this is going to target all the dl tags so in the next video we're going to be looking at how we can use external styling to style our web page so i want you to just go ahead and do this make your background to be dark 
and make all your text white you can play around with the colors anyways but i'll see you in the next video